Her story is a familiar one, moved to New York to pursue a modeling career. In 2005, I made the decision to move to New York City. I didn't know a lot of people in New York, but I just thought that it was a worth risk to follow my dream. This is really what I wanted to do. I will go for it. For Gina Rosero, it was worth the risk. She was discovered by a photographer, signed with an agent, and was booking shoots. But Rosero kept a secret from most people she had met in New York. I made the decision to take this as an opportunity to have this almost like a refresh button. I didn't want to always have to constantly tell about my journey of what I've gone through. My agents did not know about my, my history. My closest friends knew, but like a lot of the colleagues and acquaintances did not know about my history. I just want to be a model, a woman, someone who's moved to New York and pursuing a dream. Rosero's story starts thousands of miles away in the Philippines. In her words, she was assigned boy at birth. I had that very clear moment. When I was five years old, I would always wear the t-shirt or the towel on my head and drape it on my back. And I would walk around the house all day wearing that. And there was a moment when my mom actually asked me saying, how come you always wear that t-shirt in your head? I said, mom, this is my hair. I'm a girl. Rosero embraced the woman inside her and entered a transgender beauty pageant popular in the Philippines. In the Philippines, there was a lot of beauty pageant for transgender women. In the month of May, there's always a fiesta celebration somewhere almost every day. And during those fiesta celebrations, there's usually a dance contest, a singing contest, and, you know, a pageant for transgender women. Her first pageant, where she won best in swimsuit and best in long gown, changed her life. That night really changed my life. It really did change my life because after that, it was just full expression of my femininity. And there were going to be more major life changes, the biggest one of all, when her mom, who has always been one of her biggest supporters, called to tell her her U.S. visa was approved. You really want to be recognized as a woman, right? And she researched that there was a law that, that would allow me to change my name and gender marker in the United States. So that really set the path for me. First, she traveled to Thailand for the surgery, and she officially became Gina Rosero. Was that a tough decision for you to actually have the surgery? Because no. it made it permanent? No. No. That's what I wanted to do. So I researched who the surgeon was, but um, that was my life's, one of my life's goals. There is a dichotomy in the Philippines. A majority of the country is devoutly Catholic and conservative, but it is also a country with a cultural history of LGBTQ tolerance. It is ranked as one of the gay-friendly nations in the world and Asia. In fact, transgender mythical characters are found throughout Asian literature and oral storytelling. In that part of the world, this has been part of the culture, a thousands of years civilization. There's a Buddhist goddess of compassion, Guan Yin. There's an Indian Hijra goddess. So this existed for such a long time, and it exists until now. It's still celebrated, but not politically recognized. There is an estimated 50 million transgender men and women worldwide. In the U.S., about 700,000. And because the transgender population is still the most marginalized and invisible group in the Asian community and in many parts of the world, Rosero, after living nine years quietly as a woman, decided it was time to tell her secret. And she did it in a big way. For the last nine years, some of my neighbors, some of my friends, colleagues, even my agent did not know about my history. I think in mystery, this is called the reveal. Here is mine. I was assigned boy at birth based on the appearance of my genitalia. Her revelations went viral on YouTube. Almost overnight, she became the unofficial spokesperson for transgender men and women, young and old worldwide. I've been really 
blessed with a support system. I, I, I feel that, you know, I've been lucky to have had an amazing support system with my family and my friends. I always been conscious of this, of this blessing that I've always thought that I would give back in a big way in the community. From her TED Talk, Gender Proud was born. The nonprofit's mission is to help give a voice to the transgender population. From state to state, country to country, the laws vary when it comes to gender assignment. What we're trying to create is um, global unified messaging, why it's important for countries around the world to adopt gender recognition policy. What that means is it would allow transgender people and gender variant people to change name and gender marker without being forced to go through surgeries. Because right now there's only a handful of countries that allow you to do that. Since her revelation, she has been working nonstop. She was featured in Marriott International's Love Travels campaign. She was also in the October issue of Glamour magazine and walked the runway for Carmen Mark Valvo during New York's Fashion Week. For Rosero, her new assignment is clear. She has become an outspoken supporter of transgender rights and an inspiration to others just like her. I'm Ernabelle DeMillo for Asian American Life. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.